So our next speaker is Itai Lang. It's a work with Zed Vir Ginsburg, Dan Raviv, Shaya Vidan, Dror Eger, um, Forster Cole, uh, and uh, Michael Robinstein. Okay. Thank you, Tommy, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Itai Lang. I'm finishing my PhD at Tel Aviv University with the amazing guidance of Professor Shah Vidan and starting a postdoc at the University of Chicago with Professor Rana Hanukkah. Today I will talk about our idea of pure point correspondence and we'll show how we used it to do shape matching without a decoder and also for a hybrid 3D scene flow method that uses a combination of learning and runtime optimization. <coughs> The work was done in joint collaboration with colleagues from Tel Aviv University and Google Research. Finding correspondence is a fundamental building block in many computer vision applications. For example, at the shape level, it can be used for character animation, virtual try-on, and medical image alignment. At the scene level, if we align two consecutive LiDAR frames, we can compute the motion of the scene and then track, the, track objects within it. Let's start talking about shape correspondence, where we are given two non-rigid shapes in the form of point clouds, where one of them is the target and the other is the source. And our goal is to map each point from the source to each match, matching point at the target. And here you can see the colors uh, are transferred from the left shape, uh, left shape to the right shape, according to our resulting matching. Now note that this is a non-trivial uh, task at all, because there are many possible mappings between the source to the target, and also the density of the, of the points varied across the point cloud, and additionally, the shapes usually contain symmetrical parts, such as the hands and the legs. And as you can see, our method can accurately align the point clouds and differ uh, differentiate between the symmetrical parts. A very popular approach in the literature for uh, point cloud correspondence is to use an encoder-decoder framework. For example, in the work of 3D coded, the input point cloud is passed through an encoder network that compute a global feature representation. This feature vector is passed along with the template shape through a decoder, through a decoder network that deform, deforms the template shape and tries to reconstruct the input shape. This process is repeated for multiple point cloud in a data set in order to establish the correspondence between the point clouds. Although the encoder-decoder approach is very popular in the literature, the decoder comes with considerable drawbacks. What the decoder tries to do is to regress the coordinates of the input point cloud. And this is a, a very challenging regression problem that requires a large amount of training data, which inevitably leads to a long training time. Additionally, the decoder is usually adapted to the distribution of the input shapes and limit the generalization power of the learned model, for example, to unseen shape poses. But wait a second. Why should we regress the point of coordinates? They are already given. So why not drop the decoder and use the points instead? This brings us to the key idea in our method. We take the source and target point clouds and learn pair point deep feature embedding. This is the encoder part of our system. Then we use similarity in the learned feature space and a, con and a construction operation that takes the similarity 
and, and the target points themselves to construct the target point cloud. Note that the similarity and construction operations are structured and they do not involve any learning or regression. Thus, it means that we, that we have no decoder in our system. We omit the decoder and avoid the drawback and the drawbacks mentioned before. Or in, our, or in other words, our system is decoderless. In more details, for each source point, we look for the nearest neighbors in the latent space and compute a weighted average according to the similarity of the respective target points to get an estimated corresponding target point for the source point. This process is repeated for all the source point, and this is how the target, the target point cloud is constructed by the source. And we use the term construction because we use the existing target points like, like a Lego building blocks instead of regressing them, regressing them with a decoder network. The constructed point cloud is optimized with chamfer distance with respect to the original, point, uh, original target point cloud to resemble the, the original point cloud. And this way, we obtain a discriminative point feature representation which enables to match the point in the latent space and get a fine-grained point-to-point -point correspondence between the point clouds. Now note that the only thing that is learned in this system is the point feature representation. And since this is the only thing that is needed for computing correspondence, we regard it as pure point correspondence. Focusing on learning only the po point feature representation results in a win-win situation. It gives a better, a better correspondence accuracy with much less training data. This graph depicts the correspondence accuracy versus the error tolerance for the Shrek 19 dataset of human shapes. Previous methods use an entire training dataset of 230,000 training shapes, shapes while our method uses a fraction of only 1% of the training data of 2,000 shapes, while achieving better correspondence accuracy across all the tolerance range. For example, at 5% tolerance, it achieves an improvement of 23 points in the accuracy. Let's see a visual example of the correspondence for the Shrek 19 dataset, where the target point cloud is on the left and the ground truth source mapping is on the right. And note that this is a very challenging pose because it, it is non -standard, uh, a non-standard pose of a crouching uh, person. Previous methods suffer from severe correspondence errors, for example, at the legs and the hands. In contrast, our method produces a much more accurate result which resembles the ground truth mapping from the source to the target. Let's continue and talk about scene flow. In this case, case we have two observations of a dynamic scene, for example, a self-driving scene, where the source point cloud is in red and the target point cloud is in green. And our goal is to compute the pair point motion vector for the source point in order to align the source point cloud to the target point cloud. And as you can see throughout the scene, there are challenging cases, for example, different point density of the cars and different geometries, curves and, and flat, and there are a partial, a partiality of the objects. And still the method can help handle all these great, uh, cases gracefully. There are three main approaches in the literature for scene flow from point clouds. The first is to train a regression model that takes the two point clouds and directly output, outputs the flow. This regression problem is extremely challenging 
because the flow is regressed in the free 3D space. We need to we take a point and need to say where it goes in the in the ambient space, which is very difficult uh, uh, even for humans. A second approach uses correspondence learning together with refinement uh, learning refinement regression, which is easier than the full regression of the flow. However, the joint learning of correspondence and refinement regression burdens the training process and compromises the flow estimation results. A third approach involves no training data. Instead, the flow is optimized for each point cloud pair separately from scratch at the, at the runtime. In this, in this approach, the flow is randomly initialized. Thus, the optimization process is prone to local minima, which results in some optimal flow prediction. In contrast to previous methods, we proposed a hybrid scene flow approach. We recognize that regression learning is hard, while corresponding learning is much easier. So we throw away the regression part, and during training phase, we learn a pure correspondence, uh, pure correspondence model that does not involve any flow regression. Then, at the inference phase, instead of doing refinement regression with a, another learned component or complete for flow optimization, we do refinement optimization where the initial flow base, uh, where the initial correspondence based flow serves as a good starting point for, for the optimization phase, which leads to the convergence of better, of much uh, more accurate flow result. Let's see a visual result on the Kitty SynFlow dataset, uh, where this is the result of float, a very popular uh, SynFlow method that uses the second approach of learning both correspondence and refinement. And as you can see, the warped uh, source point cloud here in blue is noisy, and the structure of objects in the scene is compromised. In contrast, our method computes a much more accurate result that preserves the local geometry and correctly aligns the two point clouds together. Another interesting property of our method is its balance between error, between performance, and processing time. This graph shows the endpoint error, the, the flow error on the Kitty dataset, versus the inference time in a logarithmic scale. Network-only based methods tend to be fast, but with limited accuracy. On the other hand, using an optimization-only method results in a lower error, but it takes a long time. In contrast, our method offers a new working point. It achieves an error reduction of more than 50% compared to the network-based, network-only methods, and it has 10 times shorter inference time compared to the optimization-only method neural prior. In addition, our method offers varied balance between performance and inference and inference time. If we reduce the number of, of, the, of optimization steps during, during runtime, we can shorter the inference time and get a similar working point to the network only methods. On the other hand, if we increase, if we are allowed to increase the processing time, we can further reduce the, the uh, scene flow error. And as you can see, our method bridges the trade-off gap of existing methods. To summarize, we talked about pure point correspondence, where the idea is to focus only on point feature learning for computing the correspondence. We showed how to use it for decoderless shape matching, which, result, which results in higher correspondence accuracy and much less training data. 
We also talked about hybrid 3D scene flow that uses pure correspondence model during training and uh, test time and refinement, refinement optimization instead of regression. Our papers and code are publicly available. I welcome you to take a look. Thank you very much. Thank you, Itai. Uh, we have time for questions. Okay, so uh, let's uh, thank the speaker again.